Hi everybody, welcome back to another student med video and today we're going to be discussing renal bone disease which is also called mineral bone disease and it occurs when the kidneys fail to maintain the correct levels of minerals and hormones in the blood which causes bones to become softer and sometimes deformed. Renal bone disease often occurs secondary to chronic kidney disease which is a progressive loss of renal function. If you'd like to find out more about chronic kidney disease, then check out my other video linked in the description. Renal bone disease may start to develop in stage two CKD, which is where glomerular filtration rate is still quite high, between 60 and 89. For patients with end stage renal failure, which is a glomerular filtration rate of less than 15, over 90% of patients have renal bone disease. As the kidneys are responsible for the formation of active vitamin D, which is called calcitriol, patients with chronic kidney disease therefore have a reduced amount of vitamin D formation. One of the functions of vitamin D is to facilitate the absorption of calcium from the gut. With less active vitamin D, there is significantly less calcium absorbed from the diet. On top of this, the decline in renal function also means less phosphate being removed from the blood which consequently causes a rise in serum phosphate levels. Phosphate binds avidly to calcium in blood, and therefore both of these factors combined lead to a lower serum level of calcium. This state of hypocalcemia leads to the development of secondary hyperparathyroidism, which is where low calcium levels stimulate the parathyroid glands to release parathyroid hormone, which aims to restore the levels of calcium in the blood. To achieve this, Parathyroid hormone liberates calcium from the bone. A consequence of this, however, is that bones now have less calcium, which leads them to becoming weaker. This mechanism of attempting to raise serum calcium levels is not a long-term solution, as patients with CKD are always fighting an uphill battle to keep calcium levels at normal concentrations. This is because patients will have ever-rising phosphate levels and an ever-decrease in production of vitamin D, both of which lead to the reduction of calcium levels. Therefore, patients with renal bone disease have characteristic findings in blood results. They will have hyperphosphatemia, hypocalcemia, and elevated parathyroid hormone. Management of this condition therefore revolves around attempting to bring minerals and hormones back to their correct levels. This means avoiding food high in phosphate, which includes beer, cheese, chocolate and milk. To restore vitamin D levels, patients should be provided with a vitamin D supplement. And to correct the high parathyroid hormones, patients may be prescribed sinicalcet, which is a calcium emetic, which means it acts directly on the parathyroid gland to reduce the release of parathyroid hormone. In very rare cases, if this is ineffective, then patients may be offered a parathyroidectomy, which is removal of one of the parathyroid glands. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to find out more about chronic kidney disease or the parathyroid axis, which is where we learn about the difference between primary, secondary and tertiary hyperparathyroidism, then see my other linked videos in the description below.